Hello, it's good to be with you today uh, to spend some time together in God's Word as we continue our study in Psalm 119. Before we come to that study, uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we, great, we thank you for your great faithfulness. We thank you that you reveal yourself to us in your world and especially in your Word. I pray that today, as we would seek your face in your Word, uh, that you would truly make your face shine upon us, uh, that we might follow in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, today we come to the final two verses of the of the pay section of Psalm 119, verses 135 and 136. Let me read them for us. Make your face shine upon a make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Let me do that again. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Now, that first phrase should sound fairly familiar. Make your face shine. Make your face shine. Um, for many of us, if not all of us, we have sat week by week under the preaching of the word, uh, gathering with God's people in corporate worship. And the conclusion to corporate worship is the Lord sending us out with his benediction. Uh, one of the most commonly used benedictions is the Aaronic benediction, that benediction which is found in Numbers chapter 6, uh, that which the Lord instructed the priests to speak over the people of Israel. He said, in this way you will put my name upon them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And here uh, the psalmist is praying based on that benediction. Make your face shine upon your servant. Uh, this is very similar to the way that the psalmist opens Psalm 67 where he says, Make your face shine upon us and bless us. Uh, and he there goes on to, to pray for uh, the, the glory of the gospel going to the nations. But I think this is a, a good lesson for us uh, that the benediction, that blessing that God speaks over his people also becomes for us an enforcement of our prayers. That as we go out from the Lord's presence, having received his blessing, that we can pray in response to that blessing. And so the psalmist here is praying in response to that blessing. And he's saying, Lord, make your face shine upon your servant. I need to know the shine of your face, your presence. I need to know your name upon me. I need to know that I belong to you. And what does he tie it to here? It's interesting what he ties it to here in verse 135. He says, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. What is it that marks God's people? What is it that marks God's gracious face shining on his people? It's when they hear the teaching of his statutes. It's when they are able to learn God's ways. They are able to follow in the steps that he sets for them. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's, it's the cry of the Lord's servant. The Lord's servant doesn't say, I, I come out from the presence of the Lord. I've received his blessing. Now I just want to go figure it all out on my own. The Lord's servant comes out receiving the Lord's blessing, saying, Yes, Lord, make your face shine upon me. Teach me. Teach me in your statutes. Once again, we remember the statutes. Those are those fixed rules of God, those things that are, as, as it were, inscribed in stone, etched there. They don't change. Lord, in, in a landscape, in a culture that seems to be constantly changing, help me to know your unchanging truth. Give me something changeless, timeless. Help me to know you. God's gracious face shining upon his servants is that they would know his statutes. But notice the response that comes in verse 136. It's interesting the way the psalmist puts these two verses right together. He says, after he says, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes, he says, my eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. What is it? The more that we dwell in God's gracious presence, the more that we understand his statutes, the more it grieves us. 
to see God's law broken, to see that people don't keep the law of God. They don't guard it. They don't protect it. And this is, this is no small disturbance in the heart of the psalmist. He says, my eyes shed streams of tears. Think of that. When's, when's the last time you cried really, really hard? What was it that caused you to cry in such a way? And think of the, the heartbreak that is there that causes those kind of tears, the sorrow. And I think there's at least a, a double meaning for this sorrow. First, it's a double meaning because as we dwell in God's gracious presence, it, it grieves us because we know that he is the gracious God. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can take somebody doing something to me better than I can when they do it to somebody I love. You know, think about it. Oh, if your brother or sister, or perhaps your your spouse, uh, your children, uh, you get very defensive. You're no longer meek and mild. You're ready for war. It breaks our hearts. It breaks our hearts to see people disregard God in that way. It breaks our hearts when God is teaching us his way and we say, how can you, how can you do this to the gracious God? The God who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. The God who so loved the world. How can you break his law? But there's a, a, a second point, I think, too. It's, it's not only a sorrow for God's name being dragged through the mud, as you might say. It's the fact of the, the sorrow and the hardship that men and women, boys and girls around us go through because they don't know the law of God. They don't know his gracious face. They don't know the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. They are enslaved in darkness, and their darkness gets darker and darker. You see, the world judges us sometimes, saying, as we call people to abide by the law of God, as we stand firm on that, and we say, friends, do not break the law of God. Don't you know that that deserves his eternal wrath and judgment? And they say, how judgmental of you. How narrow of you. How unloving of you. But we say, friend, no. We say this because we love you. We say this because we don't want you to be in the misery. Friend, we say this as those who have dwelt in the presence of the living God. Who have known the smile of his face. Those who have his name on us. We say, friend, won't you come and join us in the sunlight? Won't you come and join us in the place where blessing is? Friend, won't you come in out of the dark? So I guess I'm, I'm always challenged by this verse. This is perhaps one of the most challenging verses in all the verses of Psalm 119 for me. Psalm 119, 136. Do I weep? Do I weep? Do I weep for the sake of the glory of God being disregarded by man? Do I weep for men and women, boys and girls who are missing the glory of God? Friends, do you weep? Does it pierce your heart? Oh Lord, make your face shine on us. Teach us your statutes. Give us hearts that would weep for your glory and for the lost. Let's pray. Father, we come before you recognizing that you are a gracious God. A long-suffering and patient God. A God who is full of compassion. A God who holds out his hand all day long to a disobedient and obstinate people. 
And yet, God, we also recognize that you are the thrice holy God, the God of perfect righteousness and justice. O oh Lord, our God, as your people, make your face to shine upon us. We belong to you. Teach us. Teach us your statutes. O oh God, make our hearts hearts that would weep, weeping for your glory to be shown, to be recognized, to be displayed, weeping for the lost who are trapped in darkness. O oh God, may our feet be fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Use us. Change our hearts, change hearts around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I'll see you next time.